we got a fish here. Let's see what we get. It's a shark? No, oh, it's a big sail cat. Look at that sucker. Alright. Let's see if I can reel him in a little bit. Yeah. Big sail cat. Bit of Yazuri stick bait. Look at that sucker. That's about a three pound catfish. Wonderful. Just what I didn't want. But I caught a fish. I didn't get skunked out here in the Indian River Lagoon, May 21st, 2020. Uh, yeah, I just had to cut the hook out of his mouth, but uh, that's a big Florida sail cat. Throw him back in. Uh, they fight like the devil, but they're not good eating. I mean, if I was starving to death, I know people, certain people eat them, but I don't eat them. All right, back to trying to get the horse cream. Well, I got another fish. It's a puffer fish. Watch this. See if we can't get the puffer fish to puff. <laughs> It'll blow up like a bigger than a cantaloupe if he gets it so inclined. Oh, I don't want to get that slimy thing off. Unfortunately, he's not hooked very bad, but I don't have pliers, so I have to cut it out. Well, he's not puffing, so uh, we get him off the hook here. So I'll show you guys the teeth on this sucker. Look at that. This is the puffer fish. Let's see if I can get him to puff. Come on, puff up, you little puffin, non puffin thing. Well, when they puff up, they're really cool looking, but oh well. Well, I caught another puffer fish, and this one's actually puffing up. They puff up bigger than that, but he was just twice that size, so I didn't have the camera on in time. Now he's deflated. You can uh, eat these. You can eat the flesh of these, but the problem is you have to know how to clean them. You have to be very careful because there's a portion of their meat that is deadly toxin or make you very sick and can't possibly kill you too. And I don't know uh, how to prepare them, but they're actually a delicacy in some oriental dishes. So that's the mouth. I'm right at the mouth of Horse Creek off the west side of the Indian River Lagoon, about halfway between the Panita Causeway and the O'Galley Causeway. Really had a hard time getting here. The wind's uh, about 15 knots. It was called 10 with gust to 12, but that was, there was flags that were just straight out, wind socks that were almost straight out. So uh, it was 15 knot wind out of the south and just battling right into it. A little bit of the southeast actually, so it kept trying to want to yaw me around. Total pain in the ass, but I'm here now and sheltered from the wind. So I'm going to go up here and explore this creek. I wanted to see pretty cool coquina formations right there. This is the area called Coquina Ridge. <laughs> All right.
fish for snook? Yeah. You had much luck up in here? Oh, uh, yeah. Wow, okay. Well, I won't steal your, fi your fishing spot, but I, I'm surprised that you... So then again, skinny water. You can does it go much further in this? No, or, it stops uh, right here. That's it? Yeah. Okay. Well, I've never been in here, so I'm sorry to mess with your fish and I'll get out of here, but interesting. So that's as far as you can go. Yeah. I just missed a snook over there. Did you really? Yeah. They're big. They're, sm I, they're smart, though. Okay. I've got a Yozuri know, stick bait on there. It's like a, you know, wrap Live bait. type. Live bait. Live what they it is. Okay. They won't touch anything else, especially I, during the middle of the day. Have you tried at night at all? Maybe. You no, top, I haven't really tried it at night. Top water at night may, I, you know, sometimes snook get crazy at night and yeah. bite stuff they won't touch in the daytime. But, uh, all right, well, that's cool. I hope you get a big one, buddy. Thank you. Take it easy.
just talking to that young fella in the kayak. I don't know if you saw him go by, but he's up there. It's my first time in here, but I said, he fishing for snook? He had a big mullet on. He said, yeah. So, yeah, so I mean, uh, snook, there's pretty much everything in here. Interesting. Well, I've never been on. Oh, wow. That's cool. It nearly, it did jump in, or, oh, you guys jumped. We jumped in our jambo and followed it out. I see. I thought you said it jumped in the jambo, and I'm no, like, well, that would. Well, good luck to you, my friend.
catch up on US 1, Horse Creek, and Bogali, Florida. You hear the traffic. There's the remnants of the old Dixie Highway Bridge. I'm assuming that's what that is. That was probably built in about 1900. Guys working on that that fought in the Civil War. And it's still there to this day. US-1 bridge over Horse Creek. tailwind all the way home. And leaving the mouth of Horse Creek, going back into the Indian River Lagoon in O'Galley, Florida.
back to the car. That's probably some of the windiest conditions I've ever canoed in, and I've done some serious canoeing. I would say 30 knot gusts, 35 mile an hour gusts. And uh, the last two hours, there was a 20 knot sustained wind. I mean, just howling out of the southeast. This wasn't forecast. It was forecast to get up to 12 knot gusts today. But look at that lagoon. It's just the white caps. That's not much fun to canoe in. The only good thing is I had the headwind going. If I planned it that way, I would have turned around if it hadn't been. And I almost didn't make it to the creek that I wanted to explore. But I just was determined to get there. So once I finally got in the creek, it was nice and calm. The creek's only like half a mile long, so I explored the whole thing in like 20 minutes. I came back out. And I was laughing out loud because I actually was being whisked along about twice as fast coming home without paddling as I had moved going out paddling as hard as I could. So that's a pretty windy day, but I made it back.